Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now I like PCs of all types, whether that's desktops, laptops or mini PCs. Now when I say mini PC, I, you know the kind I mean, the very small little boxes, the Nook kind of format, the Mac Mini kind of format. So we're going to be looking at the Geekom Mini IT11. Now why is it 11? Because inside is an 11th generation i7 Intel processor. Now lots of details I want to go into, so if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now a mini PC kind of sits between a desktop uh, and a laptop. A desktop is a big box, probably it goes under your desk, lots of empty space inside of it. You have to connect up an external monitor, keyboard, mouse, and so on. At the other end of the laptop, it's got its own monitor, keyboard, and mouse, designed really for going out on the road. But if you want something that's smaller, but stays at home, then you can use a mini PC. Now the Geekom Mini IT11 has got an Intel 11th generation i7 processor, as I said, plus a whole load of extra goodies and ports. So let's dive in and have a look at the uh, specifications. So the model I'm reviewing has an i7 1195G7 uh, processor from Intel, 16 gigabytes of RAM, that's dual channel DDR4, and it's got a 512 gigabyte uh, SSD. It comes pre-installed with Windows 11 Pro, you get a gigabit Ethernet port, you get Wi-Fi 6, you get a VESA mount, a power adapter, HDMI, USB, and so on, and we'll look at the ports uh, in a moment. So everything you'd expect from a PC and more. Let's look at the design. So it's obviously a mini PC or a Nook clone. It's 4.41 inches by 1.8 inches by 4.6 inches. And for those of you in the rest of the world outside of America, that's 11.2 centimeters by 4.6 centimeters by 11.7 centimeters. And it weighs just 565 grams. There are ports on the front and on the back. Plus on the side, there is an SD card reader and a Kensington lock slot on the other side. All the sides except for the front have grills to help ventilation. The device is powered by an external power supply. That is something that some people like, some people don't like it, but to make the actual box itself quite small, there isn't room for the power supply. So that is something that you would leave on the floor and it connects up to your uh, to the mini PC. Now the mini PC does have USB 4 ports and we'll talk more about those in a second. Unfortunately, the PC can't be powered by a USB 4 port, which in my opinion would have been a nice addition. Now the bottom of the box, there are four rubber feet, so it doesn't slide about on your desk, and they also hold four screws, which you undo to pop off the bottom of the device, so you can expand or change the SSD and the memory. So let's talk about expansion. Once you're inside, you'll see there's an M2 slot for the NVMe storage, and there are two memory slots. All of these can be upgraded with the RAM holding a maximum of 64 gigabytes. There's also a slot in the actual tray, the bottom plate as it were, that can actually hold a 2.5 inch SATA SSD drive. That's a nice way of adding additional storage without having to upgrade that uh, M2 based storage. On the outside, you get an Ethernet port, HDMI port, mini display port, head jack, three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and two USB 4.0 ports. Now, if you use the HDMI port and the mini DP port and the two USB ports, you can actually connect up to four monitors for this little box. You wouldn't imagine that when you see it, but four monitor support, that's pretty impressive. So moving on from expansion and the ports, let's talk about connectivity. As I said, you've got that one gigabit ethernet port, that's wired uh, network connectivity. You've got Wi-Fi 6, that's 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz, and you've got Bluetooth 5.2. I tested out the Wi-Fi 6, I've got a Wi-Fi 6 router here, and the PC was able to talk to the rest of my network at the full capacity that the Wi-Fi 6 would allow me. Okay, so it's a nice, neat little box, got lots of expansion and connectivity options, but what about the performance? How well does it perform? Well, let's find out. So as I mentioned earlier, this model that I'm reviewing has an i7 1195G7 processor, and that's of course an 11th generation, i.e. Tiger Lake Intel Core uh, processor. It has four cores and eight threads and they support SSE uh, 4.2, AVX2, uh, AVX512, all within a thermal design of between 12 and 28 watts. It also includes an Iris Xe GPU from Intel, which supports a DirectX 12.1. 
Now this particular i7 processor is aimed at the mobile segment, which would mean laptops and mini PCs like this one. And that's why it doesn't need huge amounts of fans, huge amounts of ventilation, because it has a smaller thermal budget between 12 and 28 watts. So it can fit in that little box without having to worry about too much ventilation. So to test the CPU performance, I use Cinebench uh, Release 23 to test both single core and multi-core performance. So let's start with the single core performance. So here I'm using a motley crew of PCs that I have around here, including my MacBook Air, including my Ryzen 5 PC that I use to edit these videos. And as you can see, the i7 1195G7 has the highest single uh, core performance score compared to anything else. Its closest companion uh, is the MacBook Air with the Apple M1. The Nook 9 that I have here with an i7 ninth generation processor, as you can see there, is third place. And then I've got these other machines around here that even dip below the 1000 score. So a very impressive uh, result here from the, uh, the IT11 from Geekom. Now the story is slightly different when you come to multi-core performance and the main reason for this is that the Geekom IT11 with this i7 processor has only four cores and eight threads. It's beaten just barely by my Ryzen 5 1600 because that has six cores and 12 threads. The Nook 9 also has six cores and 12 threads and the overall winner with of course eight cores, even though some of them, of course, are uh, power efficiency cores, is the Apple M1. So you can see a good result there. If you take the Nook 9, my Ryzen 5, and the uh, i7 in the Geekom IT11, very close between them, uh, but clearly the M1 there is the winner overall. So what does that mean? It means that in terms of absolute CPU performance, you've got nothing to worry about here. This isn't a desktop gaming uh, PC that's gonna cost you three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. This is a small box that sits on your desk and it performs amazingly well considering its size, its form factor, and its price. Now, testing calls GPU performance is very different to CPU. Now, the thing to remember here is that there are lots of graphics cards from NVIDIA and from AMD that cost more than just this whole PC in its entirety. So this obviously isn't aimed at hardcore gamers. If you want high fidelity, high frame rate, uh, 4K gaming, then this isn't the box for you. However, if you're a casual gamer and you just like to play the occasional game, anything from Solitaire up to kind of, you know, some of the latest titles, but just down in 1080p, then you might be quite surprised on how versatile this box is. So for my own testing, I tried Minecraft, standard Minecraft, but the one I'm showing here is also with a high-end shader pack that's got reflections and shadows, all kinds of interesting things in it, and that works out well. I've also tried it with Total Accurate Battle Simulator tabs, one of the favorites of one of my children here, and that actually does really well when there are lots and lots of characters on the screen. And I also tried out Planet Crafter again, at, not at the higher settings, but at one of the higher settings, and certainly it is able to hold its own at a 1080p. Okay, so how much does one cost and where can you get it from? So these devices start at $529 for an, a version with an i5 processor in it, but also with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 uh, gigabytes of storage, all the way up to $649 for the version that I tested. Now, Geekom also offer an 11th generation Intel Celeron variant called the Mini Air 11, and that comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage, and that starts at just $229. Now, you can get these directly from Geekom or from Amazon in the USA and in Europe. Links will be in the description. So what's my overall conclusion? Well, the mini PC format isn't something that's brand new. However, this Geekom implements it very, very well. You've got the possibility to expand the RAM, expand the storage, You've got lots of ports to connect to, you've got lots of connectivity, Wi-Fi 6 uh, and so on. So really everything you need is inside this little PC and you're not really limited when later on you want more RAM, later on you want more storage, you can. Just about the only thing you can't change is actually the processor itself. So actually I think there's quite an attractive option and it may certainly be something you should look into. However, the most amazing thing for me was the overall performance. Considering its size, considering the ventilation system, considering its price, 
I was amazed at how well it performed. In fact, it put my Ryzen PC, which I admit is older, I'm not saying that, but it put my Ryzen PC, which I use with three monitors to edit all these videos, it put it to shame, particularly in the single core S, and it was competing very well with my MacBook Air, which obviously is a much more expensive device. So if you're looking for a small PC that sits neatly on your desk, not taking up too much space, not gonna have noisy fans, it's not going to annoy you all day with all the whirring going on, it's gonna do well in CPU stuff gives you lots of connectivity, it'll even play some casual gaming at 1080p, then have a look at the Geekon Mini IT11. It might just be the PC for you. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, if you want to see more PC reviews, laptop reviews, do tell me in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. But until then, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains and I also have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in the mail address, no spam, but you will get my newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.